Woo Woo and Company. The coldest winter in two thousand years has arrived. The entire forest is frozen. The trees look like giant icicles, and the sun is hanging above the clouds like a pale disk. There is only one place in the entire forest that is warm and cosy, and that is inside the little red house. And it seems you are not the only one to think so. A lovely fire is burning in the fireplace, and the living room smells of smoke and firewood. You are home alone today. If you pick up your book, you can look around the living room. Behind the blue door. Hello, we are out here. There's the key. I see it. Grab the key and I'll join you inside. There must be a key you can use. I think there's a key somewhere. I think there's a key somewhere. Yay! Yippee! Thank you. I'm so hungry. Look down to find out why. My little friends are so hungry. Look down to find out why. Titmaya and the pine cone tree. Titmaya is always happy because she lives with her tiny little friends inside the biggest tree in the forest. It is a gigantic pine tree covered with huge pine cones, and inside the pine cones are the tastiest pine nuts you will ever find. During the winter, Titmaya shakes the pine cones down from the tree so that she and her friends can eat the delicious, juicy seeds. She never goes hungry, not even during the worst of winters. Titmaya makes food for herself and her little friends. Baking pine nut cookies and making pine nut juice and pine nut soup with a sprinkling of toasted pine needles, and when there's a party, they drink the pine nut punch which her little friends make in the shed. In the midst of one of their merry parties, Titmaya and her friends go down to the lake in the woods for a swim. The moon is lurking above the lake. Staring at its own reflection, but that is the night when the worst winter in two thousand years arrives. In a single hour, the cold has frozen the lake water into slippery ice. The moon is happily plating its moonbeams in the icy mirror, but Titmaya, thinking the ice is actually water, takes a big jump into the lake. But her skinny legs crash onto the slippery ice. Gack! What a crack! She breaks all four legs. So Titmaya is lying in bed, and outside the snow is falling and the wind is blowing and it is getting very cold. But it's rather cosy inside. The pine tree is covered with snow, making the house delightfully warm. But after two weeks, her little friends start running out of pine cones to make their dinner. Her little friends ask Titmaya what to do. Go outside and shake the tree, Titmaya says. First, you have to shake off all the snow, then shake it again until all the pine cones fall down. But we are so little, they whimper. How are we going to shake such a big tree? Titmaya looks at them. It's true, they are very little. We need help, she says. So Titmaya's little friends helped her outside and onto the snowmobile. Then drove her to the little red house to ask for help. Can you help Titmaya and her friends shake the pine tree? Remember what she said: first the snow has to be shaken off, and then the pine cones have to be shaken to the ground.
shake the tree. Can you? Hello. Hey. Hello. 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 Hurry up and read my story. Look down. You have to be quick. Everett and the Secret Place During the summer Everett and the Secret Place During the summer, Everett's mum and dad live in the secret place. Everett's dad is called Everett, and Everett's mum is also called Everett. Everett's parents agree that the secret place is a good place to raise their children. The air is good here, and there is a nice view. So Everett, that is the mum, flies from branch to branch, placing her larvae children on the tree. And Everett, that is the dad, flies after her, making sure the children are properly tucked into the lovely warm cocoon bags he has sewn for them. Then Mum and Dad fly south to spend the winter in Africa. They leave a note for the children to let them know where in Africa they are, and they remind the children to fly away before the last leaf has fallen from the tree and it gets too cold to fly south. One chilly autumn day, Everett emerges from her cocoon. She sits on the branch for a while, looking around. Her brothers and sisters are still fast asleep inside their warm cocoon bags. Everett reads the note from her parents and counts the leaves on the tree. There are still eleven leaves remaining. She plucks a leaf from the tree and eats it. She spreads her wings and flies down to her brothers and sisters to wake them up. Hello, Everett shouts. It's time to wake up. But the other children just keep sleeping. Everett shouts until her voice is completely hoarse. Hello, hello, hello. And then the coldest winter in two thousand years arrives. Even though there are still ten leaves remaining on the tree, the freezing wind carries the winter cold with it. Everett is very worried. She tries shouting at her brothers and sisters again, but they are sound asleep, and she knows that if they don't wake up before the cold bites, they will never make it to Africa. So Everett flies over to the little red house to find out if you can help her wake up her brothers and sisters. Would you mind helping me wake the others? My voice has gone all hoarse. I think you can use the basket to get to the top of the tree. It's so dark at home. Look down and read my story. I'm so hungry. Look down to find out why. Woo Woo and the Shark Woo Woo lives on the beach. Every night she watches the sun disappearing into the sea. The setting sun looks like a giant scoop of strawberry ice cream. Wu likes strawberry ice cream more than anything else in the entire world. The only thing she eats is ice cream and fish. 
but she can only buy strawberry ice cream when the shop is open during the summer. And during the summer and winter, spring and autumn, she watches the strawberry ice cream sun slipping down from the sky. When the sun meets the surface of the water, it looks like the sun is melting across the sea. But this summer, Woo Woo hasn't had nearly enough to eat. They had plenty of strawberry ice cream in the shop, but she hasn't caught a single fish because there is a nasty shark swimming in the sea, eating all the fish. Woo Woo is certain the shark would eat her too if she sailed out there on her own. And now, during the coldest winter in two thousand years, Woo Woo is as thin as a popsicle stick. Normally she is as plump as a plum when the cold arrives, but now, underneath all her feathers, she is shivering with cold, and she is hungry, so very, very hungry, and that is why she has left her beautiful sunset to find help inside the little red house in the woods. Pick up the book and see if you can help Woo Woo. I hope you're very tough, cause the fish was not enough. The shark is going to eat you and me, and anything else swimming in the sea. Now pick up the oars and climb into the boat. Now all we have to do is to row out after that stupid shark. Ocean, and blow the winds over the sea, and blow the winds over the ocean, and bring back my bonnie to me. Look, there's the stupid shark. Yippee! Did you see how scared that shark was? I don't think we'll be seeing that foul creature again soon. The winds have blown over the ocean. The winds have blown over the sea. The winds have blown over the ocean and brought back my bonnie to me. Now I can fatten myself up again. Thank you.